life-threatening injury. Yeah, it was definitely new. I never experienced that injury before. Um, not even strain, anything close to that. Um, but learning how to walk again, you know, well, not walking and, and getting assistance in everything that you do for the first three or four months was tough. Uh, I've been through surgeries and injuries before, but you know, the longest you know, recovery I had was three months. But the first phase of the Achilles was three months long, and you couldn't walk or run. You had to use a scooter. So I think just those milestones of reaching, like learn how to walk and learn how to run, jump again, and getting used to certain movements again, I think that's that's underestimated. People don't realize that. You've already been asked about uh, James Harden a little bit here, but, I mean, the, the reports are pretty wide that you two talked while you were working out in L.A., and apparently he expressed interest in wanting to join you. Do you relay that James wants to play with the Nets to Sean as soon as you hear something like that? I don't know where you're making these stories up that me and James talk about any of this at a workout. Like, I don't know where that came from. And James is a friend of mine, but I let the front office handle all of that stuff. I heard all the noise, and I heard that, you know, James potentially wanted to come to the Nets, but anybody can make up stories. I never thought too much about it. It's focused on myself and my teammates probably did the same thing, you know. We'll just move forward. Are you 100% right now, or are you limited at all in practice, or can you go, Can are you physically going 100%? Oh, uh, yeah, every every drill that I've done, I've been going as hard as I could. Uh, I mean, 100%, I mean, what it was, I mean, I've been in the league for 14 years. Even if I didn't have an Achilles, I probably wouldn't be 100%, you know? So, um, you know, it's the wear and tear over time, I guess. Uh, but I feel, I feel solid. NBA reporter Malika Andrews joins us now live on SportsCenter. Malika, you were around KD most of last season, and I know you were listening in on all of that today. There's a lot to cover, right, from the injury to apparently people making up mm -hmm. stories and then back to the injury recovery. What stood out the most to you? Well, first of all, Sage, you know, we, we are standing by our reporting and what we reported on, on that initial interest between James Harden uh, and the Brooklyn Nets. But today, what really stood out to me was how Kevin Durant didn't lean into, I am going to absolutely unequivocally be the MVP version of Kevin Durant. I'm going to temper expectations a little bit because he knows that this is an incredibly serious injury that he's coming back from. And he said that he isn't sure he's feeling good right now. He heard him just say he's going through drills as, as close to, at as close to 100% as his body can provide. But in the same breath, he's saying he wants to see what it feels like to really be in a game before he's ready to declare that he's 100% back and this is exactly what he is going to look like. Yeah. He also talked about working out with Kyrie Irving, which was very interesting because they are building that chemistry in the offseason already. Yeah, and, and that's a great segue to our next question here, Malika, because we did hear from Steve Nash today mm -hmm. specifically about that KD-Kyrie relationship. And it's, it's one to keep an eye on, obviously, so much potential, but two very unique, strong personalities. What does new head coach Steve Nash say about trying to get these two, you know, to be their best? And, of course, he has that history with KD and Golden State. Absolutely. Well, Sage, first of all, what's most important that he said is he would be surprised to see both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving play in all 72 games this season. With Kevin in particular, he said that we may, to some degree, have to save him from himself a little bit here because he wants to play at the highest level. It's a serious injury that he's coming back from. He didn't say specifically how many games there would be some form of load management there, but it would be surprising to him to see them out there for all 72 games. He also alluded to potential seeing some glimpses of that seven seconds or less Suns team that he played for and that Dan Tony coached, who's now on that staff. Malika Andrews, you're going to have a blast for many reasons covering this team this season. We look forward to it. Preseason tips off in like a week. Malika, thank you. Dive on how the NFL is handling the pandemic. Again, that Ravens-Steelers game moved three times. Uh, so a lot going on to dive in here. Those are your half-hour headlines. Well, Jay, NBA training camps to open day as we take a look at cool. the Eastern Conference. Yeah, I can believe that. No, I can't <laughs> believe it. Starting in Brooklyn, uh, Kevin Durant returning from the ruptured Achilles and teaming up with Kyrie Irving. Two-time finals MVP hasn't played since June of 2019. Down to Philly with the new look Sixers. Added Doc Rivers as a coach and Daryl Morey as a president of basketball's operations. Uh, they haven't made it past the second round since 2001. And the Celtics busy off 
season, they lock in Jason Tatum, five-year max extension worth up to $195 million. Also sending Gordon Hayward to Charlotte. And more news coming out of Boston this morning. Kemba Walker is out until at least the first week of January. He received a stem cell injection in his left knee in October. Danny Ainge, new on SportsCenter. Well, I think this next year will tell us a lot more. I think um, you know, he saw some specialists over the last, um, I don't know, six or eight weeks, and they all came to the same conclusion. And I think that gave Kimba a great peace of mind. Maybe we didn't do him justice by bringing him back to pass into the bubble. I think this has as much to do with the turnaround as anything else. I think if we were starting games in the middle of January, he'd probably be starting right along with us, and I don't even know we'd be talking about it. Um, so I do think that, you know, it's, it's very similar to what I said when we got to the bubble. This is about making sure that he feels great, strengthening appropriately, moving at the right pace, hopefully playing his best basketball late. For more, let's bring our NBA insider, Brian Windhorst. Okay, Brian, Kimball Walker out till at least January after he got that stem cell injection in his left knee. How much of a concern is this for the Celtics going forward? Yeah, I think this is one of the most important things in the Eastern Conference to watch early in the season. Uh, Ken Walker has really been bothered by this since last All-Star break. He's been dealing with it on and off, and he's such a different player when he's live. When you watch him out there and you can tell when he's feeling good, he's that kind of electric player. And the Celtics here are opening the door for the fact that he may not be right well into the season. Even when he does come back, they are expecting him to have limited minutes. This is one of the reasons why they signed veteran Jeff Teague to, to start in his place if he needs it. But Danny Ainge today said that they do not have any plans to use their $27 million trade exception. There are players out there that they could get to help them, and maybe they will have to go to that step. For, but for now, they're going to stick with what they have on their roster. Let's see how it develops. Yeah, Kimba averaging over 20 points a game in his first season with Boston NBA players. Again, reporting to facilities today, but Anthony Davis still yet to resign with the Lakers. So, Brian, what's the holdup with they? Well, he is going to meet with the Lakers today, have a discussion about what their medium and long-term plans are. Now, there's been some speculation out there that Anthony Davis may be waiting to see what Giannis Antetokounmpo does with his extension. But I am told that what Anthony Davis is focused on right now is whether to sign a short contract. The three options he's looking at are one year plus an option, two years plus an option, or four years plus an option. And he's just been indecisive, Jay, because he signed a five-year deal in New Orleans ended up regretting being under contract that long. And he just wants to make sure that he's got peace of mind about it. Most people in the NBA think he should sign a two-year deal, but we'll see if he only signs for one, the Lakers could have salary cap space next summer. He averaged nearly 28 points a game in the postseason, again, helping the Lakers win their first championship since 2010. Brian, thank you so much. And outlining health and safety protocols. Notably, the document doesn't address what triggers a decision to suspend the season. But it does indicate that a small or expected number of COVID cases would not require a decision to halt play. Now, as part of the protocols, any player who tests positive cannot participate in any team activity for at least 10 days. And players with severe cases or those hospitalized will be observed for at least three full days before returning. Travel parties will be limited to 45 members, including 17 players. So we're joined now by senior NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski. Woj, nearly 140 pages involved in the protocol sent out by the league to teams. What are the biggest concerns that you are hearing? Uh, Ryan, in, in conversations with team presidents, general managers, they're just trying to plow through those 140 pages and understand it fully, you know, because NBA general managers see what's happening in the NFL. They saw in baseball, you know, when – you know, there are teams who are fined, who are uh, facing losses of draft picks, you know, based on not complying with the rules. So they want to fully understand how to implement this and this or their organizations. And, you know, a big difference now for NBA teams is they're going to be on the road traveling. They don't have the protection of a bubble and just trying to make sure that not just when they have the players with them, but when the players are away from them, either on the road or at home, and they come in contact with those who might have the virus, how that impacts their teams and locker rooms. But there is just a lot for teams to get their arms around now, and that's really what they're trying to uh, get through here as players are starting to return and camp is on the cusp of starting. 
So many more variables for them to deal with than when they were inside that bubble. We'll see how they manage it. Now, you reported last week that free agent Anthony Davis would not resign right away with the Lakers, that it extended till past Thanksgiving. So, for past Thanksgiving, where do things stand? Yeah, Anthony Davis, his agent, Rich Paul with Clutch Sports, they're, you know, they're still talking with the Lakers. And you, know, you can expect a deal is going to get done here you know, before the Lakers formally start their camp uh, closer to the weekend. Hey, Anthony Davis wants to understand what all his options are in terms of length of deal. And that's the conversation they've had with the Lakers. Does he do a deal like a two plus one contract that would put him uh, with LeBron James and have those two uh you know, be on the same contractual course. And so those are all conversations. He can do a longer four or a five-year deal. Those are the conversations they're having now with the Lakers still. All right. And we've got 22 days until the scheduled tip to the NBA season. That is Adrian Wojnarowski. Coach, thanks. Oh, for the NBA. Training camp opens tomorrow. This is first with the preseason running from December 11th through the 19th. Each team will play at least twice. Some teams playing as many as four games. The season starts on December 22nd and continues through early March when there will be an all-star break despite no all-star game, Hannah. Yeah, unless they have to make up games <laughs> during that time as we welcome in Brian Winter. So, I mean, Brian, listen, uh, this has been crazy times for the NFL, for college football, for college basketball, just games getting canceled constantly with these outbreaks across the country. And over the weekend, the NBA put out their COVID-19 protocols. So we're talking about 450 players who are not going to be in a bubble, the one that was so successful restarting finishing season what do we need to know about these protocols well hannah the nba is saying that they are expecting and it's common sense that there's going to be positive tests and they're openly saying that even though there's going to be positive tests they have no intention of slowing the league down postponing or canceling and they made the decision back in november that they were going to start an individual market that the bubble idea was going to be retired for the time being now there are teams that have announced that they're going to start without fans in fact, the Charlotte Hornets were the latest team to announce that today. But the NBA is going to try to fight through this, going to try to manage this situation, and they are going forward. And they are going to start Christmas week, and they are going to get as many games as possible. To try to mitigate what you're talking about, they are not going to announce the second half of their schedule until later into, into 2021, so they can hopefully make up games that they know will probably have to be postponed. Yeah, and players who test positive could be out as long as 12 days. That's several games in there. It's not just a weekly game like the NFL, so you could perhaps foresee some sort of domino effect. It'll be fascinating to see how that goes um, as players begin reporting tomorrow. And we have a couple of unresolved stories, really big storylines regarding the Lakers and the Bucks. Let's start in L.A. with Anthony Davis. Yeah, how about the two biggest storylines of the NBA offseason? That's Anthony Davis and Giannis Tenacumpo. Anthony Davis has not signed his contract yet. Training camp starts tomorrow, and it's led people in the league to wonder if he is waiting to see what Giannis does with his contract. The reason this is interesting, Hannah, is that the Lakers only have two contracts on their books for next year at just $15 million because LeBron James has an opt-out clause in his contract. And if Anthony Davis builds his new contract with an opt-out clause, they could have anything on the table. They could go chasing after free agents, whether it's Giannis or not. So definitely keep an eye on that. He's running out of time to sign him. As for Giannis, he returned to Milwaukee from Greece over the weekend. And the expectation that the team has is they will meet with him in the next few days to discuss his contract extension. Now, it's $225 million in five years, but he only has until December 21st to make up his mind, and then it goes away until next summer. This is obviously a massive thing, arguably the most important thing in the NBA right now, and Giannis is going to have to address at some point. It's